Good day, students. So welcome to number 16 on our review on um, proof by mathematical induction. Remember that uh, the wide collection of tutorials can be found on mathgotserve.com. And if you would like um, access to the remainder of our um, review series on mathematical induction, simply go under the pre-calc tab um, on, in mathgotserve.com, OK? All right, to get started, let's go ahead and um, outline our plan of attack. This is the basic rundown as to how you carry out proofs by mathematical induction. All right, so it can be broken down into three parts. The first part is the base case. Um, for this problem, the base case involving involves showing that you just have to show that um, n equals four is true. All right. Some of you might think, oh, it's always n equals one, but you always have to take a look at the constraints. Um, that you want to show that a statement is true um, on uh, when determining the smallest value for where you want to show that the statement is true, all right? Number two, the second part is the inductive, inductive hypothesis, all right? This part involves making an assumption. Here, we're going to assume that um, the statement is true for some n in the set of integers that satisfy the um, constraints. Okay, so assume that n is equal to k is true for some k um, in the set of integers that um, are greater than or equal to 4. And then lastly, part 3 is the inductive step. Where we're going to be taking a step up from our inductive hypothesis. So for the inductive step, we just have to show that. Um, if n equals k is true by assumption, it follows that um, the next step, n equals k plus 1, is also true. And if we can do all these three, carry out all these three steps, then we're done showing by induction that the statement is in fact correct. All right, so let's take a look at the problem, um, problem number um, 16. Now, what we're going to do here is we want to prove by induction, prove by induction um, that 3 raised to the nth power is less than n plus 1 factorial for n greater than or equal to 4. Of course, n is in the set of natural numbers, all right? That's standard um, procedure. Okay, so there is what we're going to pr prove. Let's start with the first part. Part one is the base case. Base case. Um, for the base case of outlined in our plan, we want to show that the foundation is true. Show that n equals. Now, since we want to show that this statement is true for n greater than or equal to four, the smallest integer value that satisfies this inequality is 4. So we want to show that n equals 4 is true. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to plug in 4 into both sides of this um, inequality and see if we end up with a true statement. So we're going to have 3 to the 4th. Is it less than 4 plus 1 factorial? Okay, so 3 to the 4th is the same thing as 9 squared, which is uh, 81. Is 81 less than 4 factorial? Um, is the same thing as 5 factorial. 5 factorial. <clears throat> what is 5 factorial? Um, is 81. We need to put a question mark here because we don't know if this is true or false, all right? So is 81 less than 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? That's um, what factorial means, right? So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 6 is 120 times 1 is 120. So is 81 less than 120? Is it? Absolutely. So our foundation is true. The base case is accurate. So we have permission to move on to the next step. Part 2, the inductive hypothesis. All right, inductive hypothesis. So for the inductive hypothesis, we're going to be making an assumption here. Inductive hypothesis, we're going to assume 
assume that um, that n equals k is true, all right? For some k in the set of um, natural numbers that are bigger than or equal to 4. So let's write that down. We're going to assume that the statement, instead of writing it with n, we'll replace the n with k. So okay, assume that the statement 3 to the k is less than k plus 1 factorial um, is true uh, for some k um, in n in the set of natural numbers, okay? And also, and k is, of course, um, greater than or equal to 4. Well, let's say it's greater than 4. Well, let's, let's say that's greater than or equal to 4. It doesn't really matter. All right, so we are assuming that this statement is true for some arbitrary k by assumption. Now, what do we know about the next step, the inductive step? Can we use this um, assumption to show that um, the inductive step is also um, true? Okay, so for an inductive step, we have to show that n equals k, uh, n equals k is true by assumption, follows that the next step, n equals k plus 1, is also true. It's kind of like a domino effect, right? So if one being true implies that an x is true, then you just keep on going on forever, and then you will know that the statement is true for all integers satisfying the inequality, all right? So that's that's the main idea. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start from the left side of the inequality, and we're going to advance it to the next term, which is 3 to the k plus 1. So does advancing this k to the next step, does that advance the right side to the next step also, k plus 1 plus 1 factorial? Does that happen? All right, so 3 to the k plus 1, first thing we're going to do is use the property of exponent to um, decompose this um, uh, exponential expression right here. All right, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to write it as 3 um, to the k times 3 to the first power. Remember the rules of exponents. Whenever you're multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the powers, right? So we're doing the reverse of that. We're basically decomposing the powers and expressing it as a product of two exponents with the same base. Now, based on our assumption, we know that 3 to the k is less than k plus 1 factorial, all right? So if 3 to the k is less than k plus 1 factorial, we can apply that here, and then that means that 3 to the k plus 1 is going to be less than k plus 1 factorial times 3, since um, 3 uh, since 3 to the k is less than k plus 1 factorial. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to take a detour um, for a second, Let's go to the side, and then um, what we're going to do, let's see, we know that um, k is greater than or equal to 4, right? That's a constraint on all the acceptable um, natural numbers. So k is greater than or equal to 4, or 4 is less than or equal to k. But we know that 3 is less than 4, right? So if 3 is less than 4 and 4 is less than or equal to k, this follows that 3 is less than k, okay? So that implies that, this implies that, okay? Now, if 3 is less than k, what do we know about k plus 2? If 3 is less than k, 3 is also going to be less than k plus 2 because we... Um, increase the right side by 2 while holding this fixed, all right? So this also holds true. Now, what if we multiply both sides of this inequality by k plus 1? For k greater than or equal to 4, if we multiply both sides of this equality by k plus 1, we'll have 3 times k. Actually, k plus 1, let's multiply by k plus 1 factorial, is also going to be less than k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, 
All right, as long as k is greater than 4, um, this inequality still holds true. All right, so using this constraint on k, we know that 3 times k plus 1 is less than k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial. All right, so we can go ahead and apply that here. Um, this is going to be less than k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial. Okay, now um, what can we do here? Using the definition of factorial, we can condense these two um, products right here, these two items that we multiply, these multiplicands. So we condense them, this is simply going to become k plus 2 factorial. All right, so since it's k plus 2 factorial, <coughs> that is, can, we can rewrite this, right? Um, we can rewrite this as. Uh, k plus 1 plus 1 factorial. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, how do we know that? You notice that if we compare this to the assumption, we advance this power by k plus 1, and then this power is advanced by k plus 1. What did it happen to the right side? This is k plus 1, and this side became k plus 1 plus 1 factorial. So that's excellent, okay? So now we can write our conclusion. That's what we are supposed to show. Since the statement, since the statement um, is true for the base case for n equals four, all right, and um, in truth for n equals k follows that. The next step, n equals k plus 1 is also true. And uh, the statement, the statement is true uh, for all n greater than or equal to 4. Of course, n is in a set of integers, all right? So let's put our box of accomplishment to indicate that we are done with our proof. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other great clips such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. We'll appreciate it. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.